<laughs> so if you're in a relationship with somebody and you feel like God sent you that person and they're displaying these characteristics, I'm here to tell you right now, <laughs> set yourself free. This is your sign right here. Set yourself free because this person is a counterfeit. There are people on this earth whose divine, darkly divine assignment is to cause chaos, discord, disruption, disarray, disrespect, dis everything in your life. Because if they're unfaithful to God, you can bet all your money that they're going to be unfaithful to you too. All right. They're going to be constantly doing the same thing to you over and over again and then be like, sorry, sorry, sorry. And then expect you to forgive them, even though you know they're going to do it again. No, that's not what we want. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Bree, and I create videos based on faith, life in Houston, and of course, sister locks whenever I feel inspired to do a new style, which lately I haven't, but you see, they've been growing and they've been growing. Anyway, what inspired this video is that sometimes for a lot of us, Proverbs 31 women and Ephesians 525 men, for a lot of us, it feels like when we enter into relationships with Christians, it can end up feeling like we are entering relationships with actual demons. Wolves in sheep's clothing, Pharisees or two-faced people, I don't know, people who claim to proclaim the name of God and pro proclaim to fear God or even be a child of God, but in all honesty, they don't show the fruits of being someone who actually has the fear of God in them. Some of us may be in a relationship right now where you feel like God has confirmed that relationship with you and God has told you that that person is your spouse. But the reality is sometimes we can get those, those thoughts from God really mixed up with our feelings, our deepest desires, our emotions, our lusts, our idolizing of the future even, just having in mind this picture perfect, wedding and marriage, building a beautiful family, big house, farmland, all these things, and think that because these are good thoughts, that this person was sent to you from God. Now, sometimes these people are sent to you by, by God. Really, it just depends on what you prayed for. If you prayed a prayer that was a worldly prayer, say for instance, you are a woman who is praying for a husband that's like a jagged edge man. Well, if any of y'all listen to any of Jagged Edge's albums, in one song they're singing, let's get married. And then in the next song they saying, I'm sorry, come back, please don't leave. So with that being said, you really gotta be careful about what you're praying for and making sure that what you're praying for in the spouse is not worldly because sometimes God will actually answer that prayer send you that person just to teach you a lesson about how to pray better and i have personal experience with that so that's why <laughs> as the result of this last relationship ending i learned how to pray the scripture over what i'm believing for in the spouse for example i'm praying ephesians 5 galatians 5 1 corinthians 13 and 1 peter 3. these are things that a person cannot fake Okay, when a person are displaying these qualities of a man or if you're a man of a woman, that's real. That's from God. Why? Because it says it in his word that this is how a man is to be to his wife and this is how a wife is to be to her husband and to her children. So your homework assignment after you get done watching this video is to go and read the fruits of the spirit and memorize them. Take out some time to reread that scripture over and over again so that you can really familiarize yourself with what a god fear in person actually looks like what someone who has surrendered their life to christ someone who's honestly and truly repentant they're leaving their past in the past and they're being a whole new creature none of us are perfect right when you read over the fruits of the spirit it can seem like you will never find a man like this but that's actually not true and sometimes you'll even meet men who say oh yeah i love god but I'm still working on myself. And they'll use that phrase, working on myself, as an excuse to do bad things. So the most foolproof way that you can be able to determine whether or not the person that you're talking to is a Christian or a demon in Christian's clothing is time. So memorize the fruits of the spirit, take your time to actually get to know this person. Here's another thing that I want you to take into consideration. 
if it's hard for you to memorize the fruits of the spirit or really any scripture besides John 3 16 I want you to think about the relationships that you've been in in the past think about relationships that you've had with people who have been hateful envious spiteful chaotic miserable pessimistic lazy mischievous dishonest untrustworthy unfaithful unloyal impatient quick to anger takes no accountability lack of self-control no integrity harsh merciless unforgiving towards their family members or friends they have a chip on their shoulder they're rude disrespectful or generally unkind if the person that you're talking to is displaying these traits these the, everything that i just named are the opposite of the fruits of the spirit <laughs> so if you're in a relationship with somebody and you feel like god sent you that person and they're displaying these characteristics i'm here to tell you right now <laughs> set yourself free this is your sign right here set yourself free because this person is a counterfeit this person <laughs> is a demon for sure and you may have seen little signs of these characteristics in the beginning of the relationship decided eh, i'm gonna ignore them and now you're seeing them in full force like the deeper y'all go into the relationship the longer y'all are together even if you popped out a couple of kids for them you're starting to see more and more that they're displaying the opposites of the fruits of the spirit and that's your like that's the biggest sign ever that god can show you that the person that's in your life right now is not a part of God's will for your life. Y'all gotta realize that specifically in the world of dating, a lot of the stuff that's going on in the world is spiritual warfare. Ephesians 6 and 12 says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. There are people on this earth whose divine, darkly divine assignment is to cause chaos, discord, disruption, disarray, disrespect, dis everything in your life. Some people's purpose in this world is simply just to hurt you and break you down and make you lose your faith. The Bible even says this. It says in 2 Peter, 212 that people like this were born only to be caught and destroyed and like animals they too will perish and a lot of times you can't just look at a person and tell that they are this type of person who is born to just hurt people and spite people they don't always look homeless or crazy or deranged you know sometimes these type of people are people that elevate themselves to high positions they have a lot of power and esteem and they put themselves in a position to where they are depended on by lots of people. They can be lawyers, doctors, brokers, even pastors. They often lead with deception, pedestalization, and love bombing. So basically, when they meet you, they sweep you off your feet, whisper a whole lot of sweet nothings, tell you things that nobody else has ever said, charming you and swaying you and making you feel a love that you never felt before. And then boom, <laughs> they drop the bomb after they've gotten you in a position to where you're fully dependent on them. Cause now they know that you're not gonna leave. And once they get a sense that you're all in and you ain't going anywhere, that's when they start to tear you down with their betrayal, their lies, their gaslighting, the narcissism, the insults, the emotional abuse, which is not as loud and obvious and prevalent as like physical abuse. And I just gotta tell you, a lot of us truly Christ-fearing people, we are in trouble. And the reason why I say that is because we, when we date, it's like we lose that sense of wisdom that we're supposed to be walking in every single day. Jesus even says this himself in Luke 16 and eight. It says, it is true that the children of this world are more shrewd in dealing with the world around them than are the children of the light. Let me read it to you in the NIV version. It says, for the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than are the people of the light. And what does it mean to be shrewd? To be shrewd means to have sharp judgment, to be astute, to be quick witted. Like you can look at a person, well, I'm not gonna say you can look at a person, but it's more so like your ability to perceive people on a spiritual level 
when you spent some time with them. Sometimes it's only a little bit of time. Maybe within the first 30 seconds to 60 seconds of meeting person, you can kind of get a sense of who they are. Or maybe for some of you out there, it could take a little bit longer. Maybe it takes a couple weeks and you start to feel fire alarms going off in your body. Or maybe after a month, or hopefully not longer than a month. <laughs> and here's the good thing about your relationship with God. God encourages us to ask for this wisdom. He wants us to be wise when it comes to our dealings with other people, especially with people of the world, which some of these Christians are. They say that they're Christians, but they're actually of the world. It literally says in James chapter one, verse five, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. In another translation, it says, if you need wisdom, ask our generous god and he will give it to you he will not rebuke you for asking meaning he ain't gonna look at you crazy he ain't gonna say oh no you should have been known that and all this other stuff and also y'all if y'all are finding yourselves get constantly getting into relationships where it feels emotionally abusive or you're constantly facing anxiety and you're constantly confused i encourage you to get a bible get a bible my advice would be to download the U, U version Bible app for free on your phone and then, you know, read through some of these scriptures that I'm telling you about. Read through the different translations from the NLT, NIV, New King James Version. Find out which translation really like helps you to understand the word the most and then go out and buy that translation. This one right here is a New King James Version uh, Bible. Um, and I also have another paper Bible that's the regular King James version. If you can make sure you can get the oldest copy that you can find, because I don't know if y'all know it or not, but there are talks about people wanting to update the Bible to take out the rules about homosexuality and other things that make people feel offended um, in this day and age. So you wanna get the oldest ver version of the Bible that you can find either in the bookstore or Amazon. If you can get something that's from 2016 or earlier, that'll be in your best bet. Um, yeah, so this one, this one is from 2016. So another good resource, um, if you're wanting to understand more about God, but also wanting to understand more about yourself and why you enter into certain relationships, um, obviously therapy, just you know <laughs> if you can afford it but if you can't don't stress it sometimes your employer might offer it for free through their eap program or even through teledoc so you might want to reach out to your hr person and try to see if you can get that handled for free if not follow christian therapists follow their podcast on youtube read their books it'll show you a lot i recently ordered this book called the emotionally destructive relationship by leslie vernick and when I say y'all, she be all up in my business. She be all up in my business. So I wanna read this quick ex excerpt to you, which briefly describes what an emotionally destructive relationship is. And this is another way for you to be able to tell whether or not you dating a real Christian or a demon. It says, when does a relationship become destructive? One, one or both par parties commit physical, emotional, verbal, or sexual abuse upon the other. Two, one person is regularly overprotective, overbearing, or both toward the other. Three, one person is overdependent upon the other to affirm his or her personal value and worth, to meet all of his or her needs, and to make most of his or her decisions. Four, one person demonstrates a pattern of deceiving the other through lying, hiding, pretending, misleading, or twisting information to make something appear other than what it is. Five, one person exhibits chronic indifference, neglect, or both toward the thoughts, feelings, or well-being of the other. Basically saying, whenever you bring up your feelings or concerns about your partner and they just dismiss you or minimize you, they tell you that I don't care, they make you feel like an unequal partner, they make you feel insignificant, they make you feel like you don't matter, your voice don't matter, you do nothing around the house, and all this other stuff. Yeah, that's what number five means. So yeah, I had been through some of this stuff and didn't even realize that this was considered emotionally destructive or abusive. Just didn't know, just didn't know. <laughs> Cause as some of y'all know, some of us wasn't taught 
And there's no one to blame because if I wasn't taught, then that means my parents weren't taught. And if their parents weren't taught, then that means that their parents weren't taught. So at some point, this generational curse has to be broken. And it starts with you making a wise decision for yourself right now today in the present of who you're gonna give your time to. Lastly, I wanna wrap up this video by talking about what are the characteristics of a safe person, of a good, God-fearing, holy, righteous, not perfect, but somebody who is actually, they trying to do right by you. Like these are the pe people that you don't need to be afraid of right here. This person is curious about your needs, your wants, and your desires. They care about your boundaries, which means that you also gotta be strong enough to set boundaries and expect them to respect your boundaries, okay? If you enter into a relationship and the other person can sense that you don't have boundaries, they will take advantage of that. They ask you questions about your preferences. They remind you that we're a team in this and that you're an equal. You're not too needy. They take accountability when they mess up. They say, I'm sorry, that was wrong. Tell me about how that made you feel. And then they don't do it again. Okay? We don't want to be with those type of Christians who like to take advantage of God's grace. The ones who say, sorry, 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 every single day for the same exact sin over and over again every day. Like, no, that's not the type of person that you, you want to be with. Because if they're unfaithful to God, you can bet all your money that they're going to be unfaithful to you too. All right? They're going to be constantly doing the same thing to you over and over again and then be like, sorry, 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 and then expect you to forgive them, even though you know they're going to do it again. No, that's not what we want. The good person is consistent. These are green flags. Their words match their actions. They prioritize you and desire to build trust with you, intimacy and connection, and not just sexual intimacy. <laughs> There's more to intimacy than having sex. All right. They want you to communicate honestly, even if it hurts their feelings. And that's a big one. That's a really big one. That's really important. That's how you know that you're in a safe space with a person and that it's not an emotionally abusive relationship. Safe people can hold space for your hurt. They can validate and empathize, not because they're weak, but because they love you and they care about you. All right. And then if you ever need to speak up about your feelings and you feel feel like you have a hard time doing that after all this time of you being in bad relationships finally you find yourself in a good one and you want to kind of test and see if this is a good relationship or not bring up something that bothered you now based on how they respond this is how you can tell whether or not a person can handle conflict this is how you can tell whether or not a person can healthily handle disagreements with you without becoming angry or vindictive or abusive or giving you the silent treatment, cold shoulder, not calling you, not texting you, don't want to show up at your house anymore or do the sweet little things that they used to do for you. That's how you figure it out, okay? So yeah, their response to you should be very warm. It should be considerate. They should be able to take accountability. They should be able to apologize. They should want to talk through things with you instead of like running away from the problem or like talking down at you, being condescending towards you and all these other things. So yeah, that pretty much wraps up <laughs> how to discern a Christian versus a demon in your relationships. I pray that this video reaches everybody that it was supposed to reach. Um, I really had a hard time coming on camera and doing this video because I'm just like, God, I don't know, that's vulnerable. I don't wanna do this, but hey, I think it's good for me to work on being continuing to be vulnerable with others even though i've been hurt in previous relationships right just because i've been hurt doesn't mean that i can't still have a good kind gentle heart and be open because i still do desire relationships i want to show y'all this vision board that i created to demonstrate to the lord that i still believe let me see is it two there we go to exercise my faith and show god that i still believe so I come in focus right here. So yeah, this vision board just has some different dress styles that I was interested in uh, looking at. A big old Bible verse to really just anchor and solidify what I'm believing. And then other scriptures are written on there as well as a short list of green flags that I'll really be focusing on, including the fruits of the spirit. So yeah. Um, 
at the same time though balance right we it's okay to create vision boards specifically for what you're believing in in a marriage right because we have vision boards for all areas of our lives our careers our families our house and whatever but this one specifically for that however i want to make sure that i'm also not idolizing it right because i'm still okay with being single being single is not an issue to me even though i'm believing for marriage but um yeah so this is not something that i cry over i don't meditate over it day and night i don't tarry over this vision board because at the end of the day it's not that serious right a lot of us want to be married a lot of us want to have kids but really it's up to god right really it's up to him and what he believes is best for me given the desires of my heart <laughs> so yeah so that's it for this video i'm really glad that i came on and share with you guys um it made me feel really good i feel really happy in my heart filled with joy and peace and i hope that this video is helping y'all to feel the same way um this is gonna be part one of a whole series of videos like this where we get to discern different types of relationships explore further the spiritual welfare um the spiritual warfare um that's been plaguing our relationships you know man versus woman all over social media we see a lot of that going on in the world and yeah we're just gonna break it down we're gonna dissect it get to the root of why it's happening we're gonna pray for our people y'all if you've been hurt by man after man woman after woman make sure you're praying for them pray for them and pray for men and women in general pray for their healing pray for um them to seek god pray for them to stumble across the word pray for them to go to church y'all a lot of you guys are not going to church anymore and i understand church hurt that's a real thing you might have been scarred and jaded by these churches and i understand i've been in that boat too trust me i know but the good news is that just like with relationships not all churches are bad so ladies not all men are bad that is the truth and not all churches are bad men not all women are bad and not all churches are bad so make sure that you first of all pray god lead me to the church that you want me to start attending he will guide you okay trust him in that area of your life and also put works behind your faith all right don't just uh, sit in your house and expect the postman to knock on your door and say hey go to this church because it, it, it probably ain't gonna happen like that so make sure that you're also putting in the effort visiting the local churches in your area in my area there's like literally eight different churches just on this block alone so there are churches in your area make sure y'all going out and visiting them seeing which one agrees with the holy spirit in you because the holy spirit is not in all these churches now these are the churches that are hurting y'all it's the ones that don't have the holy spirit in them okay <laughs> just got just because it got four walls with a cross on the top don't mean that the holy spirit is there because sometimes it ain't so make sure y'all vetting out these churches the, the same way that i'm encouraged y'all to vet out your dating partners and let me know what y'all find out let me know in the comment section below how it's been working out for you let me know if you found success in that area and i pray that god be with y'all peace out see you in the next one